So in the last video, we looked at pH indicators, and we saw that pH indicators really are just weak acids, and they have a weak acid equilibrium that looks something like so. And the thing is that each one of these will have a different color. So the acid form will have color one, and the base form will have a color two. And whenever you've got both of these present, you have what you call a buffer. And we know that the pH of a buffer is equal to the pKa of the acid plus the log of this ratio. All right. Now, when the pH is equal to the pKa, you will have approximately equal amounts of the two forms. But when your pH is one unit below the pKa, essentially you will have all of the acid form. Okay, in fact, this will be greater than 90% of the time. When you have your pH one unit above your pKa, essentially you have your basic form. And so if your acid form is one color, maybe yellow, and your basic form is another color, maybe blue, then what you find is that when the pH is one unit below the pKa, you see yellow. And conversely, when it's one unit above, you see blue. And in between, you see kind of a yellow-blue thing. So what we find is that every single indicator has a particular pKa that corresponds to, roughly speaking, the pH where it starts to transition from one color to the other. Let me go ahead and pull up a table from a book and show you. All right, so each horizontal row corresponds to a different indicator. So here's crystal violet, and what we find is crystal violet has a pKa of about 1, uh, which means that as you're one unit above that, you have one color, which is blue or violet. I don't know, is it violet? And when you're one unit below that, right, you start to be a yellow color. And in between, you transition. If you look at something like thymol blue, what you find is that as the pH is below about 1, it's a red color. And as it's above about 3, it's a yellow color. And it transitions over a pH range of about 2 units wide. Um, thymol blue must be a diprotic acid because there's another pH point where it changes. Below about 8, it's yellow. Above about 9, it's blue. So what we're finding is that as the pH is 1 unit or so above the pKa, then you get the basic form dominating, and one unit below you see the acidic form. And if they're different colors, that's really awesome. Here's the phenolphthalein we used in the lab back in General Chemistry 1. What we find is that its pKa is about 9.5 or so, and so as we go to pH is about 8.5 or lower, it has this colorless form, and as we go to pH is about 10.5 or higher, it has this red form, which we normally perceive as a blue color. So all sorts of cool indicators. So depending on where you need the color to change, you can pick one of these different colors and you can see it really spans the whole gamut. Okay, so you might say, well, why are we doing all of this? Well, imagine you're doing a titration and you plot the pH during a titration. If you start with an acid and you titrate versus a base, you're going to initially start with a fairly low pH. Okay, I'm going to draw that in yellow. And this axis here is going to be the volume of my base I add. So bases have high pHs. So as I neutralize my acid, the pH will rise. And then it goes a very sharp transition before it starts flattening off again. And this point here is the neutralization volume. So at this point here, you've added a volume so that you've got equal numbers of moles of acid as base. So at this point here, you've added as many moles of base as there are moles of acid. So you've neutralized it. In fact, we refer to this point here as the neutralization point. Okay, or more formally, the equivalence point. In fact, I can plot it here on the pH curve itself. So this is the equivalence point. I've added equivalent moles of base and acid, assuming it's a one-to-one -one reaction. The pH actually is slightly different depending on the type of acid versus the type of base. And so this curve here would be for a strong acid like hydrochloric acid versus a strong base like sodium hydroxide. And why does the equivalence point pH depend on the acid and base? Well, when these two neutralize, oops, uh, then they form H2O, which we know, of course, is neutral, and they form sodium chloride. And sodium chloride is a neutral salt, and so neutral salts would have a pH of about 7. And the question is, how do we know when we've reached the equivalence point? Well, one thing we can do is we can add a pH probe and we can measure the pH. But of course, pH probes are kind of finicky and they're irritating and um, they're expensive. And uh, we can also see you know, what would be happen with this curve as we gradually add base. So imagine we add a milliliter of base. The pH starts to go up by a tiny amount. Another milliliter goes up by a small amount. It starts to go up by a larger 
in larger amounts. So every one of these corresponds to a one mil increment. Okay, and you can see, of course, now when I add another mil, it starts to go up by a large amount. When I add another mil, it goes up by a massive amount. When I add another mil, right, it goes up by a massive amount, and then it starts to level off again. So what you find is this is kind of like war, where it's sort of very boring for large periods of time and very exciting or scary for very short periods of time. So most of this pH titration curve is really boring, so the pH barely changes. It starts to go up like crazy, and you've missed it. So blink and you've missed it. So there you go. So notice in this region here, there's an extremely rapid pH change. In fact, we're going to make use of this. So very often, one drop will cause the pH to change by two or three units. So remember in the last section when I showed you those acid-base indicators, and I said they change color over two units in pH. Well, if you pick your indicator right, it can change color as it passes through the equivalence point. And where we see that color change of an indicator, we call this the end point. So the end point tells us where there's a color change of an indicator. And if we pick the indicator correctly, the end point, the, person where it, the point where it changes color, um, corresponds very closely to the equivalence point.